Hey everybody, um, it's back with, um, Puppies in a Field of Roses. Um, so, so sorry I haven't been catching up on this. Um, chapter four of our lovely Alice in Wonderland. We're getting super curious. So, um, we are on chapter four. Um, let's see, how long is this? Alright, let's start. This is going to be at least a 20 minute video. <laughs> Chapter 5. The little rabbit sends in a little bill. It was the right rabbit trotting slowly back again and looking anxiously about as it went, as if it had lost something, and she had heard it muttering to itself, The Duchess, the Duchess, oh my dear paws, oh my fur and whiskers, she'll get me executed um as true as ferrets are ferrets where could i have dropped them i wonder alice guessed in a moment that i was looking for the fan pair of white kid gloves and she very um actually began hunting about for them um but they were nowhere to be seen everyone seems to have changed everyone seemed to have have changed her swim in the pool in the great hall with the glass table and the little door had vanished completely very soon the rabbit noticed alice as she was hunting about and called out to her in a very angry tone oh i'm mary and what are you doing out here run home this moment and fetch me a pair of gloves and a fan quick now and alice was much so much frightened that she ran off at once in the direction it pointed to, without trying to explain the mistake that it had made. Hook me for his housemaid, she said to, her, to herself as she ran. How surprised he'll be when he finds out who I am. But I'd better take him his band of gloves, that is, if I can find them. As she said this, she came upon a neat little house. A neat little house on the door of which was bright. A bright brass plate with the name W. Rabbit engraved upon it. She went without knocking and hurried upstairs in a great fear. Um, at least she would meet the real Marianne and be turned out of the house before she had the fan and gloves. How queer it seems, Alice said to herself. Um, to, um, um, to be going messages for a rabbit, I suppose by Diana I'll be sending Diana will be sending me messages next. Then she began fancying the sort of thing that would happen. Miss Alice, come here directly um, and get ready for your walk. Coming in a minute, nurse. Um, but I've got to watch this mouse hole till Diane comes back and see. That the mouse doesn't get out. Only I don't think Alice went on that they'd let Diane um, stop in the house if it began ordering the people about like that. By this time, um, by this, um, oh, by this time she had found her way into a tidy little room with the table in a window. Wait, with a table in a window, and on it she had helped a fan. And fanned in two or three pairs of tiny white kid gloves. She took up the fan and a pair of the gloves um, and was just going to leave the room when her eye fell upon a little bottle stood near the looking glass that labeled words, Drink Me. But nevertheless, she uncorked it and put it to her lips. I know something interesting is sure to happen, she said to herself. Whenever I eat or drink things, I'll just see what the bottle does. I hope it will make me grow large again, for really I'm quite tired of being such a tiny little thing. It did so indeed, the much sooner that she had expected it. Before she had 
drunk half of the bottle, and she had found her head pressing against the ceiling. It, and had to swoop. And had to swoop. Sorry, I'm lost. And oh, it had to swoop to save her neck from being broken. She hastily put down the bottle, saying to herself, "That's quite enough. I hope I can't grow any more." Um. As it is, I can't get out the door, and I wish I hadn't drunk quite so much. Alas, it was too late to wish it that. She kept on, or she went on growing and growing. Um. She went on growing and growing and growing, and very soon she had to kneel down on the floor. In another minute, there was not even room for this, and she tried to, um, and she tried the effect of playing with one elbow against the floor, and the other arm curled around her head. Still, she went on growing, and a last curl, um, um, as a last resource, she put one arm out of the window and a foot up in the chimney. She said to herself. Now I can do no more. Whatever happens, what will become of me? Lucky, luckily for Alice, the little magic bottle had now its full effect, and she grew no larger. Still, it was very uncomfortable, and there, as there seemed to be no sort of chance of her ever getting out of the room again, she um, no wonder she felt unhappy. It was much pleasanter than at home, thought poor Alice, when I wasn't growing larger and smaller being ordered about by mice and rabbits. I almost wish I hadn't gone down that rabbit hole, and yet, and yet it's rather curious. You know, this sort of life, I do wonder what I can't, uh, what can have happened to me. Um, when I used, when I used to read fairy tales, and I fancied that kind of thing never happened. Now here I am in the middle of one. There ought to be a book written about me. There ought, um, that there ought, um, and when I grow up, I'll write one. But I'm grown up now, she added in a sorrowful tone. At least there's um, no room to grow up any more here. But then Alice thought, I shall never get older any than I am now. Um, I'll be a comfort one anyway, or one way, not to be an old woman. But then I always have lessons to learn. Oh, I shouldn't like that. Oh, you foolish Alice. Oh, you foolish Alice. She answered herself, how can you learn lessons in here? Why, hardly room for, why there's hardly room for you and no room for any lesson books. Lesson books. And, and so she went on taking first one side um, and then the other and making a Quite making quite a conversation of it all together, but Can after a few minutes, she heard. Sorry, um, she heard a voice outside and stopped and listened. Marianne, Marianne said the voice, "Fetch me my gloves this moment." Then came a little, then came little pattering feet on the stairs. Alice knew it was the rabbit to um, coming to look for her. Then she um, trembled. Still, she shook the house quite forgetting that she was now about a thousand times large as the rabbit and had and had no reason to be afraid of it. Um, let's see. Um, presently the rabbit came up to the door and tried to open it, but as the door opened inwards, and Alice, Alice's elbow had was pressed hard against it, it um, that attempt proved a failure. Alice heard it to say itself, "Then go around and get in at the window." That you won't," thought Alice, and after waiting till she fancied she heard the rabbit. 
just under the window. She suddenly spread out her hand um, and made a snatch in the air. Snatch in the air. She did not get uh, uh, um, she did not get hold of anything, but she heard a little shriek and fall and a crash of broken glass from which she concluded that it was possible it had fallen into a cucumber frame or something of sort. Um, next came an angry voice, the rabbits. Pat, 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 where are you? Then, and then a voice she had never heard before. Um, sure, then I'm here, digging for apples, your honor. Um, digging for apples indeed, said the rabbit angrily. Come here and help me out of this. Sounds more like this. Sounds more like this. Now tell me. Now tell me, now tell me, Pat, where is, uh, what's in that window? Sure, it's an arm, Your Honor. <laughs> oh, me goose. Um, whoever saw one that size? Well, it fills the whole window. <laughs> Sure it does, Your Honor, um, but it's an arm for all that. What's got? What's got no business here? Um, there. I mean, it's got no business there, and any and at any rate. Go and take it away. There was a long silence after this, and Alice could only hear whispers now and then, such as, Sure, I don't like it, Your Honor, at all, at all. Do as I tell you, coward. Are you coward? And at last she spread out her hands again and made another snatch in the air. This time there were two little shrieks and more sounds of broken glass. What number of cucumber frames there must be, thought Alice. I wonder what they'll do next. As for pulling me out of the window, I only wish they could. I am sure I don't want. Or I'm sure I don't want to stay in here any longer. Um. She waited for some time without hearing any. Um. Without hearing. Any more? The theory, any more? Oh, without hearing any more sounds of uh, hearing any more, at last came a rumbling of little cartwheels, and the sound of good many voices talking together. She made out the words. There. Where's the other ladder? Why, I had it to bring but one. Bill's got the other. Bill, bet you here, lad. Put him up in this corner. No, time together first. Um, They don't reach half high enough yet. Oh, they will do well enough. Don't be particular here, Bill. Catch a hold of this rope. Um, will the roof bear? Mind that loose slate. Oh, it's coming down. Heads below. A loud cry. Or boom, oh, crash. <laughs> um, now who did that? It was Bill, I fancy. Who um, who's to go down the chimney? And then I shan't. You do it. That um, that I would won't. Then Bill's Bill's to go down. Here, Bill. The master says you to go down the chimney. Oh, oh. Bill's got to come down the chimney, has he? Says Alice herself. To herself, um, when they seem to put everything upon Bill, I wouldn't be in Bill's place for a good deal. This fireplace is narrow, to be sure, and but I think I can kick a little. She drew her foot as far down the chimney as she could and waited till she heard a little animal. She couldn't guess what sort it was, scratching and scrambling about in the chimney close above her, then to see herself, this is Bill. She gave one sharp kick, 
and to see what would happen next. The first thing she heard was a general chorus, There goes Bill! Then the rabbit's voice alone, Catch him, you by the hedge! Or, Catch him, you by the hedge! Um, then silence, and then another... Um, so three more pages. Um, then another confusion of voices. Hold up his head, Brandy. Now, don't choke him. How was it, how was it, old fellow? What happened to you? Tell us about it. Last came a little feeble squeak in voice. That's Bill, thought Alice. Well, I heart, or that's Bill, thought Alice. Well, I hardly know no more. Thank you, I am better now. But I am a deal too flustered to tell you. All I know is something comes up at me like a jack in the box, and I go, and I go up, up I go, it was like a sky rocket. So you did, old fellow, said the others. We must burn down, or we must burn the house down, said the rabbit's voice, and Alice called out as loud as she could. If you do, um, I'll set Diana at you. There was a dead silence instantly, and Alice thought to herself, I wonder what they will do next. If they had any sense, they'd take the roof off. After a minute or two, they began moving again, and Alice heard the rabbit say, A barrowful will do to begin with. A barrowful of what? A barrowful of what? Alice thought. She had not long to doubt. For the next moment, a shower of pebbles came rattling through the window, and some of them hit her face. I'll put a stop to this, she said to herself, and shouted again. He better not do that again, which produced another dead silence. Alice noticed with some surprise that the pebbles were all turning into little cakes as they lay on the floor, and a bright idea came to her head. If I eat one of those cakes, she thought, it's sure to make some change in my size, and it can't possibly make me larger. It must make me smaller, I suppose. So she swallowed one of the cakes, and it was delighted to find that she began drinking directly. As soon as she was small enough to get through the door, she ran out of the house and to find a crowd of little animals and birds waiting outside. The poor little lizard Bill was in the middle, being held up by two guinea pigs who were giving some out of a bottle, um, giving something, giving it something out of a bottle. They all made a rush at Alice at the moment she disappeared, but she ran off as she, as hard as she could, and first, and soon found herself safe in thick wood. In a thick wood, the first thing I've got to do, Alice said to herself, if she, um, as she wandered about in the wood, is to grow my right size again, and the second. Oh, sorry. And the second, oh, and the second, I, or the second thing is to find my way into that lovely garden. I think that will be the blessed, the best plan. Um, it sounded in, like an excellent, excellent plan, no doubt, um, and very neatly, and the smallest idea how to set about it. While she was peering. And while she was peering about anxiously among the trees, a sharp bark over her head made it made her look up in a great hurry. An enormous puppy. I'll show you just this one picture of the puppy. So cute. Uh, an enormous puppy was looking down at her with the large round eyes and feebly stretching out one paw, one paw trying to touch her. Poor little thing," said Alice in a coaxing tone. Coaxing tone, um, and she tried to whistle to it, but was terribly frightened. I was terribly frightened. Terribly, terribly frightened. So, wait, hardly knowing what she did. Oh, terribly frightened all the time. The thought that it might be hungry. In which case it would be very likely to eat her up in spite of all her coaxing. Uh, coaxing. Hardly knowing what she did, she picked up a little bit of stick and held it out to the puppy. Um, held it out to the puppy. Whereupon the puppy jumped on 
into the air and its feet all at once with a yelp of delight and rushed at the stick and made believe to worry it. Then Alice dodged behind a great thistle to keep her from being run over, and the moment she appeared in, on the other side, the puppy made another rush at the stick, then tumbled head over heels in, um, in its hurry to get a hold of it. Then Alice, thinking it was very having like having a game of play with a cart horse, um, a cart horse, and expecting every moment to be trampled under her feet, ran around the thistle again. Then the puppy began a series of short charges at the stick, running a very little ways way forward each time and a long way back, and barking hoarsely um, while till the last um till at last it sat down a good way off panting with its tongue hanging out of his mouth and its great eyes half shut to this seemed to alice a good opportunity for making her escape so she set off at once and ran till she was quite tired and out of breath and so the puppies until the puppy's bark sounded quite faint in the distance and yet what a dear little puppy it was said alice as she went against a buttercup to rest herself and fanned herself with one of last page guys um one of the leaves i should have liked teaching it tricks very very much or very much if if i had only been the right size to do it oh dear i nearly forgotten i got to grow up again let me see how is it to be um managed i suppose i ought to drink eat or drink something but the great question is what um, the great question certainly was what Alice looked all around her at the at the flowers and the blades of grass, but she she did not see anything um that looked like the right thing to eat or drink under the circumstances. There was a large mushroom growing near her, but the same height at herself, and when she looked under it and both sides of it, it be it occurred to her that she might as well look and see what was on top of it. She stretched herself on her tippy toe and peeped over the end of the mushroom, and her eyes immediately met those large, um, those of a large caterpillar that was sitting on top, with its arm folded, with its arm folded, quietly smoking a long hookah, hookah, and talking not the smallest notice, and taking not the smallest notice of her or anything else. All right, everybody, that was a very long chapter. The book is getting really good, isn't it? So right now, she's at the caterpillar. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, all right, everybody, I hope you're really enjoying the story, and I'll definitely try to post more videos. Um, right now, I have somewhere in the 20s, which is, yeah, you know, but anyway, um, I really hope you're enjoying, and yeah, have a wonderful rest of your day. Like, subscribe, and definitely comment, um, and visit my friend's channel called Pigtails and Playtime. It's amazing. All right, everybody, bye!